Hey guys, and welcome to another incredibly special episode of The Leftover Culture Review. This is an episode that absolutely no one has asked for, but I'm out here doing it anyway, taking another look at Sega's Art Alive for the Sega Mega Drive. So I reviewed this episode this um this actual program i'm not going to call it a game i reviewed this program a couple of episodes ago now um sometime last year the year after but i was kind of i wasn't blown away when i started looking at gameplay footage on youtube but i was definitely i saw an opportunity here to um to use this program a little bit more um a lot of the gameplay footage was, well, actually, every every gameplay video I could find, they did a couple of, like, dots and lines and showed off maybe a bit of the animation function, but no one actually sort of used Art Alive. And I thought, um, here's an opportunity for me, who's got all this spare time and nothing to do, absolutely waste of a life, <laughs> to sit down and... Um, use Sega's Art Alive to design some original illustrations on a Sega Mega Drive. Um, with the thought being that it would be really cool to actually, I guess one, make these sort of videos showing how they come together, but two, um, to actually have these pieces available to buy or just online somewhere or just, yeah, Anyone who wants a piece of original Sega Mega Drive art can get it. So, yeah, that's kind of where this idea came from to do like a series of illustrations using Sega's art alive um, so that everyone can enjoy some original art produced on a Sega Mega Drive. Um, in saying that, I do a lot of my own art already using... So I've got like an Apple iPad with a pencil. Nothing nothing too fancy. Like the iPad itself is years old. The pencil is it's a first generation one. Again, it's, it's years old. Um, but I use them all the time. Uh, and I just love how accessible being able to create artwork is. Um, especially when you look at games like Art Alive, you know, the, the tools we might have had as, as younger dudes and dudettes to, to make art and just how like rudimentary and basic it's sort of like, you know, MS Paint, but potentially stripped back even from there, except for the animation stuff like Sega's Art Alive. I didn't get too much of a chance to talk about it in the review because it's not it's not a part of the program that I was particularly interested in, but for anyone who was kind of like keen to animate their favorite like Sega characters and play with the idea of like frame by frame animation, the game actually has a function where you can create your own animations. So maybe like Maybe when I finish doing some drawings in this, I'll move on to like creating animated GIFs in a Sega Mega Drive, but um, again, probably not. So, so I'm kind of like, I'm retackling a picture that I've already done on my, on my iPad. Um, I drew these like fly characters that were just like having a party. So there was like pizza, a Sega Mega Drive, a bunch of flies like getting into everything and they were just like having an awesome time. And I thought how, f you know, it it's just a fun picture about, you know, the party starts once the humans finally leave. Um, which is kind of like how I feel as well. Not exactly much of a party goer, but... I started like drawing these little fly guys just having an awesome time and I thought that would be like a fun character to bring into Sega's Art Alive for you guys today. So we're going to be drawing a fly. One thing that does kind of bug me about this program, um, you know, obviously there's a couple, but the one thing that sort of really 
I struggle with probably the most is just the limit in the terms of the width of your pen tool. I'd love to have a much thicker fat line. I've um, said this before, but the secret to drawing, especially if you're not even if you're just starting out, but like I'm quite a massive fan of big fat lines and I think it like it really shows dedication to that particular shape or that particular line like you can't if you're doing these sort of illustrations um like obviously you can do really beautiful things with small lines it just depends on the type of art but uh, what am I trying to say? I just wish there was a big fat line. I would love to be able to use a big flat fat line to design these fly guys here today. But I'm using the fattest I got. I'm also never quite sure exactly when I'm about to go off the page. Um, as an additional frustration I have. And I knew these eyes would be a bit more challenging trying to keep everything in line. So, yeah, I talked about original Sega art developed on a Sega machine. I've got the game running there. I've got a um, AV cable going into the TV. I've also got a second AV cable into the laptop here so I can record my screen for you guys. Um, and obviously capture the final product because as great and um, fulfilling as this drawing application is, there's no way really to save your work at the end of it. It's all kind of, once you hit that power button, it's off into the ether and you can start totally fresh again. So that's cool. <laughs> But being able to record the screen is obviously like a massive help because because I've got a screen recording of of the piece. So what I kind of had planned here was to design my fly guy eating a meat pie. Um, but I'm kind of thinking I'm going to run out of space. So maybe I'll have to adjust the design a little bit here. To where he's just... Uh, <laughs> Maybe I'll just do him really cranky because his mouth looks really cranky. Man. Um, I know like for me, I've done a couple of pictures now in the Art Alive program and it's just, it's hard to know exactly um, what you're going to end up with um, just because Every time I start using it, it's like, oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. Um, I'm running out of space here, running out of space there. I can't just move my canvas or my picture to the side a little bit to make space. I can't rescale it. I've just been like too spoiled, hey. But I think maybe if he was just like a really angry, annoyed fly. I'm also kind of struggling with like... To me, flies are quite, or at least the flies I've been designing have been quite furry. Like there's, there's, um, hairs to them. So I'll try and stick some hairs in, but again, I'm kind of dealing with like the one, the one width of stroke and And moving the cursor around has taken a long time. So just bear with me while I try and stick some hair in. <clears throat> Especially because I was kind of like envisioning for the body hair to kind of follow these V and M shapes. 
which means rotating all the way one way and then rotating back again all the way the other. Um, so in terms of the body... I also don't want to make the flies too skinny because flies are always sort of like, you know, obviously seen to be eating everything and anything. I think that's going to be too skinny. <laughs> Another cool trick, um, if you guys are planning on using Art Alive yourself at home, oh, I, I really hate this when you press the A button after selecting a tool. So select the, the cursor here. And then if I press A instead of start, it just, it'll, um, sorry, press start. If you press A to select the tool, it'll start drawing with it straight away, which is a real pain. You have to press start to go back to your canvas without putting any lines down. Um, I was going to say, if you guys plan on using Art Alive yourself, instead of using the eraser tool, Especially if you've only got like a white background like I do, you can use the paint bucket tool and pick white or whatever your background color is. Oh, just do it again. Pick white or whatever your background color is to instantly, um, like a razor line, I guess. Uh, because there are no layers, you're not really erasing anything, you're just making that part of the um, picture the background color. All right, we have a body taken shape here. I kind of want to put some wings in there. But are they too far back? They are too far back, aren't they? All right, I'm going to do my trick. We're going to start this body again. I'm really sorry. I did warn you that there'd be a lot of like... Slowly, slowly moving a cursor around a screen. Choose, uh, da, da, da. Choose black, press B, press start. Stop pressing A. <clears throat> so maybe here's a good spot for the wings. Do like a little mound of muscle for our fly guy. And then I'll move the cursor to there and start trying to map out some wingage. Well, that really backfired. Again, it's, it's kind of hard to know where the boundary of the picture is sometimes. So it's really easy to accidentally um, go off frame there. Especially on the recorder, I notice. So if you are like on the screen behind me, the fly guy kind of like sits nicely within his frame. But on the screen, there's like a boundary where you think you can draw, but you just can't. So his wings are going to look a bit short and stunted for now. But that's okay. And then I was talking about body hair in the M shapes. So we're going to try and give him a bit here. Yep, 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 yep. And I might just go ahead and carry on and fast forward this section of the video because um, I'm feeling for you guys at home watching me slowly make these shapes. Uh, 
Okay, so we have a bit of a fly body happening. We have the fly head. He's looking a little bit angry. Um, now to start adding in some legs. I was kind of like thinking, why would this fly be so angry? And it might be kind of fun if he was like gesturing in some kind of lewd way to really show how frustrated our fly could get. So I'm going to go ahead and give him a fly finger. Yeah, that's a nice looking finger. Hey guys, so here's a bit of a funny thing, but my camera ran out of storage and missed about the last hour of um, actual drawing. So I thought I would do a bit of a grand reveal of the angry fly guy. And don't feel like you missed out on too much. A lot of it was me moving a cursor very slowly around the screen, trying to catch all these different details of the angry fly guy. Uh, but I think it's come together really well. I had to pick a different palette. I had to do a little bit of work putting in some of those details and fine little, uh, you know, elements that really make the picture pop. But we have angry fly guy all done and dusted. You guys saved a whole bunch of time not having to watch me actually draw it. <laughs> so it all worked out for the best. And once I turned the system off, this picture is basically gone. It's lost to the ether, but it will exist here in perpetuity uh, on YouTube, but also it will exist on the leftoverculture.com. One crazy idea I had was creating a digital exhibition with all these uh, illustrations and designs done in, on the Sega Mega Drive. Um, I'll come up with a catchier title, but I also want to make these things available through the merch store um, if you want to download them. So please head over to the leftoverculture.com. Love to see you over there. Love to see you back for some more um, amazing drawings here um, as I continue doing a few more art pieces on Sega's Art Alive. But until next time, dudes, thank you so much for tuning in and... Uh, stay tuned for some more leftover culture. Cheers, guys.